Okay, here we go. A few years back, my nephew, who teaches literature and creative writing in Colorado, came to Helena for a visit, and after walking through my home and looking at the art, he exclaimed, this house is so Shakespearean. It's nothing but sex and death, sex and death. Regardless of our skin colors, cultural backgrounds, religious or other differences, we are all products of sexual activity. Erotic art, to me, celebrates the delicious, disturbing, abstract, and realistic joys of sex. Sexual themes traverse biblical, mythological, ancient, primitive, and contemporary times. When I was growing up, my uncle was curator of 20th century art at the Art Institute of Chicago. My aunt was running an art gallery in Paris. My grandmother was beginning a 30-year odyssey carving in stone, and her house had lots of erotic art. I loved art, and art pervaded my life. But when I went off to graduate school, I became deeply involved in the environmental education movement and interpretive naturalist work. My first classroom was a 20-acre outdoor forest marsh habitat. It's a wonderful place to teach about life cycles in nature, birth, death, and decomposition by various means. This sculpture by French artist Jean Clesinger was done in 1867. It always sat on my grandmother's desk, an owl symbol of death in many cultures, gazes into the bare eye socket of the king's skull, carved into the pieces the French word rien, meaning nothing. Much of my art collection deals with erotica and mortality. Let's look at some more contemporary sexual imagery. Notice the play on words in Stephanie Frosted's erotic painting of an empty purse, The Wealth of Desire. I did this stone carving out of a piece of orange Mexican alabaster. It was carved with the traditional files and rasps which I obtained from my grandmother's sculpture studio after she journeyed to the spirit world. I love seed pods, and some can be very erotic. Ever look carefully at a milkweed pod? What I love about this piece is the teeth. What was the artist thinking when she put them in there? I'll leave that to your imagination. I'm an avid canoeist and bird watcher, and I spend a lot of time on Montana lakes and rivers. This porcelain piece by Chris Anneman, a former resident at the Archie Bray Foundation, had it all for me. The birds, the water, the canoe, and the erotic imagery. This sculpture is titled Raven Lovers. The mating relationship among ravens is usually for life. This piece I carved out of a hunk of volcanic Colorado rock called Wonderstone. Of all the pieces of stone I've ever carved, this piece is my absolute favorite. Here is a lovely map of the female torso. Now, most of you have visited many of these wonderful places. <laughs> the Tata Range and Cleavage Creek and Lusty Flats and Tricky Territory. The Lake of Passion and the wide open spaces. I love those wide open spaces. <laughs> okay, I had found a smashed Biltmore Oriole nest while canoeing on the Missouri River. The nest made a perfect bed upon which Richard Swanson's lovers could lie. We've looked at some sexually thematic work and now let's look at some artwork that speaks to our mortality. Hib Sabin's work is inspired by shamanism and his belief in a spiritual bonding between mankind and the natural world. This piece, carved out of, a, out of juniper wood, was commissioned upon my father's death. It represents the continuity of generations, one life ending while others begin. This 19th century carving in wood and ivory is Japanese in origin. Maggots, beetles, birds, foxes, and all kinds of other animals can quickly consume and decompose the flesh of almost any creature. Sperm, heart tissue, skull. Experts estimate that about 108 billion Homo sapiens have ever lived. Seven billion are alive as we speak. 101 billion humans are dead. 
and their ashes and bones are all around us. The first time I saw one of Kathy Weber's biological artifact object poems, the images had an immediate impact. As a lover of medieval manuscripts and a former naturalist, here was someone speaking in a format and language that I instantly understood. Here is an oil painting by the same artist with all the symbolism I associate with life cycles, the nest for birthing, the skulls, and the wild rose blossom showing the unlimited potential and beauty of our miraculous existence. So death comes from habitat destruction too. The bird sits in her nest, squeezed in on all sides by electrical transmission lines that morph from wires into snakes in this porcelain bowl. Often birds and other animals simply have no place to go given our impact upon them. This owl skull is carved in soapstone by Steve Dilworth, an artist who lives in Scotland's Outer Hebrides and shares many of my sensibilities. The skull is actually a sarcophagus made of two separate pieces that have been hollowed out and sealed back together. Inside is entombed the remains of a robin. I want to personally thank you all for coming out and listening to the ramblings of this old goat tonight. If you have specific questions related to the artists and artwork that I presented, uh, I'd be more than happy to talk to you after the show. Thank you.